So when it comes to bioprospecting kits, I really like the tackle box or a small toolbox. Um, all the little compartments really allow you to keep, you know, all your different tools exactly where you want to go. Um, let's open the top here and show you off a little bit of what I carry. As you can see, I like these little pockets. It allows me to carry a small bottle of isopropyl alcohol, a uh, butane torch, so if I can need to field sterilize anything, it's pretty rare that I would need to. I carry, like to carry something sharp and scalpel-y, so instead of carrying a bunch of those blades, I carry a spear point scalpel. Um, those are pretty handy and you can resharpen them pretty easily. Makes them reusable. Oh! <laughs> uh, I also carry a pack of razor blades. You never know when you're going to need to shave something down. Um, I also do root scrapings with it. Uh, this is what is known as a jeweler's lens um, or a hand lens. It's used in biology a lot, especially botany. Um, I see people using them. We, I use it a lot just to get you know an idea of what the features look like on the mushroom. Um, if you're looking for hairs or whatnot on the the stipe or the uh, the cap of the mushroom, stipe being the the stem. Um, I tried to get you guys a view of it through the camera, but it just would not take. So, we'll put that away. Kind of struggle with it a little bit here, so <laughs> um, hard to do things one-handed. I like these little jeweler's loops. They do really well. There's a little nice case to keep them, but if you ever want to carry them, just fold it up in your pocket. You can. That way it doesn't take up a lot of room. Uh, I also keep a marker uh, just so I can write down on our bags and our tubes, which I'll show you here in just a moment. Um, next thing I was going to show is this is from a like cabinet-sized big screen TV that uh, we salvaged off the side of the road. And come to find out, the projection lenses in these is just perfect. They're just perfect to make as hand lenses and uh, this really is an incredible tool I feel like for the outdoorsman because you know if you want to see anything it really magnifies you could use it as a fire lens I mean it's just it's just really fun to even just play with on a sunny day um, but I actually prefer this as my my normal hand lens and of course I you can see me carrying it here in bubble wrap in the case just to help further prevent uh, any scraping to it. We keep gloves. I don't like to handle dirty stuff and not have a way to wash my hands. Ziploc bags to hold our specimens. Um, and then... <coughs> and then we also carry swabs. I like to carry sterile swabs. Um, I've noticed that non-sterile seem to work really well too, but um, you never know what you're going to need that for. Most recently, I found that the, the swabs have worked really well for mature puffballs. If you can get them before they've been burst open, but there's not much tissue on the inside, you can use that to scrape the inner walls of the, the puffball for spores. And then here, we carry test tubes or centrifuge tubes. Different kind of samples are what I normally carry in here. Uh, mainly, uh, you know, I can grab my swabs, um, break off the longer handle, and just leave those in the centrifuge tubes, and that holds quite well. But you can also hold, like, small, hard specimens, like cordyceps, uh, turkey tail, whatnot, that kind of stuff. So that's my typical bioprospector's kit. It really allows me to break it down, carrying it in softshell bags or toolboxes or whatnot, but I've always got one on hand. All right, now that you have your bioprospectors toolkit thrown together, that grab and go bag for any of your outdoor adventures, because there are always mushrooms, at least where I live. Um, the next thing you want to do is to really nail down your bioprospecting standard operating procedure, your SOP. Um, most of this can be done with your cell phone and uh, you know your your marker and whatever collection containment you have such as bags or tubes or even Walmart bags will do the the first thing I always try to do is make sure I go into my phone and turn my settings uh, my locations on I mean 
uh, onto my settings. And then whenever I take, or I find a mushroom, I want to take photos of it. Um, and with the locations on, this will GPS tag those for me. And this makes everything really easy when you go into iNaturalist later to set this up for some citizen science. Um, the first thing you'll want to do is take a picture of the mushroom in its environment. The second thing you'll want to do is take a photo from the top. Um, and then the side of the mushroom, especially if the stipe, you know, widens at the bottom or anything like that. You want to make sure you kind of capture that in photo. The bottom of the mushroom, so, or from the, you know, from the bottom. So I like to take, um, from the stem looking up into the cap or, uh, at the underside of your uh, conk, if it's a polypore, just to show whether it's a, a polypore, a gilled mushroom, uh, toothed, or, or whatnot. And then oftentimes, if you can, you know, splitting the mushroom, uh, if you've got enough of it, to show color changes or what the interior of tissue looks like is a really good way to go. After that, you really just need to bag and tag. Um, what that comes down to is grabbing your Ziploc and... Uh, throw on your mushroom inside of it and then what I like to do is, is take your um, your marker and you're going to want to write down uh, which uh, number this is in your camera roll so for the mushrooms that you found that day you know if it's the sixth mushroom I found instead of photos then I'll put number six and usually the location of where I found it. So if it was found in Bainberry, Tennessee, it'd be Bainberry number six or Oyster Bainberry number six if I know what it is. Uh, the second thing to do is bring your mushroom home after your day is after you're done collecting for the day. Take your mushroom. Um, what I like to do is clone it, take a sample and dry it um, after you know the clone is taken and then you can send um, that in if you have a iNaturalist account and a listing for that mushroom to some people and get uh, DNA run on it. So one of the things I like to do is upload any mushroom I clone or find to iNaturalist and upload my photos. The GPS tag will already be there as well the date so you don't even have to fill out that information. Um, and then after that I like to make sure that I keep some of the mushroom dried for myself uh, for future testing if need be. That's my standard operating procedure, um, and that way I've, I've make sure I collect as much information for citizen science and myself as possible, while also bringing that strain into live culture.